So we're here with a seed here at uh, ID Tech X. And hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is Lucas Janssen, and I'm uh, one of the founders and directors at, at Seed. And we're a 3D printing supplier of uh, large scale uh, additive uh, manufacturing machines. So uh, this is 3D printed right here, this big one. What is this? This is a 50% short uh, fiber filled uh, thermoplastic material uh, printed with uh, our big machine called the CFAM Prime. Is this hard? This is very hard. It's a very hard uh, surface. It also has very uh, good mechanical properties. How would you describe the, the material? Uh, this is a material which uh, consists of 50% uh, short glass fibers. Uh, and a thermoplastic material, which can be very interesting for uh, making molds for uh, the industry sector, for example. And that's something that we do at Seed. We uh, develop and deliver systems aimed uh, to make parts for the industry, and not only prototypes, but necessarily uh, end-user parts. So you have a big 3D printer. Yeah, that's correct. A big one. And you also do something like this? Yeah, because these parts I took with me to show to you that we can also introduce a continuous fiber uh, along the length of the profile. And that's something that we're uh, worldwide unique with, uh, because we're the only ones uh, being able to uh, do this at this large size. Uh, and uh, you can imagine that by adding this continuous fiber within the parts, uh, parts become significantly stronger. Uh, and uh, that also makes it possible to print these end user parts for uh, industry sectors. So can you describe this printer? Yeah. How do you, uh, do you want to come up, stand up? Yeah. And, uh, um, so this is a big machine, that's your product, right? Yeah. So how do you make this? And is it the biggest 3D printer in the world? What is this? It's the biggest uh, commercially available 3D printer in Europe, but it's the biggest composite 3D printer in the world. These continuous fibers that I was talking about, uh, on this large size, were the only ones being able to introduce these continuous fibers for enhanced mechanical properties. And we built this, uh, developed this uh, technology and this machine completely in-house. And uh, the machine that you see operating here on the video is a machine that we also have uh, uh, working non-stop in our production and prototyping facility in the Netherlands. So it's speed up. How long time does it take? Uh, is it able it, to do it does, fast enough? Or? Yeah, it does. Normally, it does 15 kilograms an hour. But that's the average. Power. It can even go to 25 kilograms an hour. But to give you an idea, uh, a ring like this would just take several minutes to print. And is this strong enough to be part of an airplane or no? Um, this is this is a this is a polypropylene with uh, continuous glass fiber. So this is strong enough for infrastructure uh, applications such as buildings or in the maritime sector. Uh, but if we would do a high-end thermoplastic material such as peak, which is a material that we can also process with our technology, and we do continuous carbon fibers, then this would definitely be strong enough for uh, parts in the So are you already delivering stuff that people use? Um, yeah, we're focused on uh, development and uh, delivery of these machines and we've already sold multiple of these systems and the first one will be officially delivered in the summer of this year um, and the next one will soon follow uh, before the end of this year. Um, I don't want to get any secrets, but is it Airbus? It's not Airbus. But it could be something like that. It could, be def it could definitely be Airbus. Uh, the first two customers that we're delivering this year are based in the Netherlands and are have a strong focus on infrastructure and maritime sector. So you can uh, 3D print a boat? Definitely. Definitely? Uh, definitely, yeah. And what's the advantage of doing that? Uh, there, if you look at traditional uh, production, uh, if you look at traditional uh, production methods, uh, there's actually a lot of manual labor involved, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what you see happening, especially uh, uh, parts that are manufactured for boats who are produced here in Europe, uh, the production uh, has yeah, actually gone to Asia, where the uh, labor is much cheaper, um, and a production technology like this could actually uh, make it possible to produce these parts locally again. And that would not only um, uh, create jobs here in Europe, but it would also uh, minimize transportation costs and uh, emissions uh, if you produce these parts locally. Maybe what you're doing is you're replacing Chinese jobs with European robots. 
in in a sense, yes. Where, which is okay. Which well, I mean, it's not nothing yeah. negative about this. Yeah. The future, anyways. Right? Yeah. It's uh, it's def the future is to to further automate uh, these processes, and that's something that we really believe in, because that also opens up possibilities uh, in other fields. But uh, is this system making a big thing like this? Is it possible to be precise, or there's yeah. a like what's the limit? Um, it's uh, the the main limits come from the thermoplastic materials that we use. Uh, so those are the in terms of the machining tolerances or the the part tolerances. Uh, the 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 thermal behavior of the thermoplastic is key. Uh, but uh, for example, if you would uh, print a part of one meter by one meter, we can actually we can definitely print this as accurate as uh, uh, down to one millimeter. Uh, tolerances, and if you would uh, involve a milling operation afterwards, for example, if you would look at uh, the production of molds uh, for the industry, then uh, with milling we can actually go as accurate as uh, 0.1 millimeters. Is that good enough for an airplane? Uh, that's definitely good enough for an airplane. 0.1, they can fly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, boats, they can uh, yeah. not sink. They, yeah, they I can. Mean, yeah, so they can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And. Uh, is it going to be buildings, like just 3D printed buildings? Uh, yeah, we're actually doing our first project uh, with our first customer, so the customer who receives their machine in the summer. And they have already uh, found a project where they're going to use the machine to print 2,000 facade clouding elements. And these facade clouding elements will be used to make the front of a building in the Netherlands. So that's already a very nice uh, example for an infrastructure and buildings application. Is that going to be a particularly beautiful building somehow? Or um, it, is there the, some attribute that can only yeah. be 3D printed, that cannot yeah, be yeah. made all otherwise? The, the, all the panels are individually shaped and uh, therefore 3D printing is definitely a key technology to make that happen because normally they would make it on a traditional uh, way where they actually need to make a mold for each individual panel and that's very cost inefficient and there's also a lot of material uh, being involved that ha is going to be thrown out after just one-time usage. So 3D printing in that sense is a key technology. So you say you're the biggest in Europe? Yeah. Does that mean there's a bigger one in Asia or in the US? Or what? And in, the, in the US there's a bigger 3D printer. Who's making that? Uh, the uh, competitor? Um, they, they focus on a different. Uh, they focus on a different segment. So, but in terms of the biggest 3D printer being able to produce with these continuous fibers, so for these very strong parts, then we're the biggest worldwide. But they do different something else. Yeah. They so they they don't do continuous fibers. They also do airplane stuff, maybe. They yeah. There are also airplane uh, stuff that they can do. Yeah, definitely. And what's the main advantage of continuous uh, fibers? Uh, it's, it has two advantages. The first is the mechanical properties, so your parts are stronger. Uh, and the second one is that it, uh, allow, uh, it reduces the thermal expansion of the material. And now it becomes quite technical, but for the production of molds for the aerospace industry, this is something you typically want.